In this video, I'm going to show you a simple scenario for migrating to SD WAN from a traditional network design. And in my traditional network design, what I have is a connection through MPLS network. But SD WAN is going to give me the ability to use the normal internet connection, which is going to be a very simple, let's say, ADSL connection or a cable connection or any other type of connection like let's say LTE connection, any kind of connection which is reliable and these days almost all of these connections are reliable is going to be utilized to create the network for me and uh, the sites are going to be managed using a centralized network management which is going to be placed in my data center let's say that this is my data center, this is the place that I have uh, my vManage, vSmart and maybe vBonds and these are the devices that are going to be the uh, base of my, uh, let's say, SD-WAN solution. But before this, what we have is normally a data center connection, and then we have something like the MPLS cloud that is in between. So let's say that this is MPLS cloud, and through this MPLS cloud, we are connecting to different sites. Let's say that this is one site, and I have a router in here, uh, that is creating, uh, that is, uh, you know, um, having the routes for this specific site, let's say site 1, and I have another site here, again, there might be another router here, and that is going to be my site 2, and I might have some other sites that I have not yet connected them to the data center. So what we have here in this scenario is data center is going to have all of the resources like file servers, stuff like that. And these sites are uh, connected to data center. Let's say that data center has this router here, the edge router here, uh, which is connected, customers edge router as a matter of fact, which is connected to MPLS, uh, let's say provider edge routers in here, in here, and in here. Now, uh, let's say that we have OSPF in our networks. What we are going to do is to, uh, let's say, advertise some routes from data center. Those routes are going to go and get to our sites, and sites are going to have the connection to data center. Now, let's say that we want to move to MPLS, uh, uh, to SD-WAN. In SD-WAN, what we have is going to be a little different. Instead of the MPLS network, what we are going to use is going to be the normal internet connection. So the normal internet connection, we are going to have some tunnels through this, uh, the DTLS tunnels to create the, uh, let's say, control plane and uh, the connections uh, using IPsec, which are going to be used for tunneling the connections to the data center and to the other places. Uh, those tunnels, of course, are dynamic. So this means that if we have multiple sites, all of them are going to be able to talk to each other unless the policies uh, prohibit us. But normally we have something like this. I'm going to have a connection to, let's say, my site, which is going to be site 3 here. And in here, what I'm going to have is going to be a WAN edge device. That's all. I'm not going to have anything in between. Let's say I might have another one right here. This is going to be my another WAN edge device. And this is going to be my site 4. And I might have multiple sites in between. So what we are going to have is another connection to data center. And this is going to be... Uh, maybe a router in here and then I have something like vManage I'm going to have my vBond I might have my vSmart and each one of them of course has its own role in my network each one of these are going to be vEdge so this is another vEdge so what is this scenario uh, this is internet whatever. So in this scenario, what I'm going to have is this is me. I have, uh, I want to have another connection to this. So that is going to be my V edge in here. Now let's check uh, this scenario in which we have a site one, which is only connected to data center through the MPLS cloud. I might want to migrate it to SD-WAN later, and I'm not 
going to of course lose my MPLS connection. MPLS is going to be another connection. I'm going to configure some colors. These colors are going to be let's say biz internet. Let's say this is one of the colors. The other color is going to be MPLS. I might have some other types of connection. Let's say for example LTE connection is going to be another one. And uh, all of these are going to be my different colors that I'm going to configure in my network. And most of the time I'm going to go with this color internet. Now data center is going to advertise its routes over OMP over OMP and these sites are going to receive the prefixes so all the prefixes are going to be available through uh, these sites so these sites are going to use the internet connection over OMP and get to the data center if I have uh, a loss in connection from here then this site is not going to be available or if I have another link failure here then this site is going to be unavailable what about site 2 site 2 is a special case in here let's say the site 2 is going to be a very big uh, branch of my network and in this branch what I have is two connections one of them through SCBAN one of them through MPLS MPLS network maybe uh, charges me uh, more so what I'm going to do is to try to uh, prefer this route to uh, data center and I have routes through OSPF so what I'm going to do is to say because all of these routes are going to be advertised from OMP into OSPF I'm going to advertise this using external type E1 and this is going to be external type 2 so you know that type 1 is going to be preferred over type 2 so when we have connection through the internet through the SC1 network we are going to forward all our packets through this SC1 network to the data center if for any reason this link fails we still have our other route here which is going to direct us to the data center as well now the MPLS connection, of course, is going to be more reliable, so Site 1 is not going to lose this connection. Uh, site 1 is connected directly to Site 2, so it can just send the uh, packets to Site 2 if the destination is here. If the destination is in data center, then Site 1 is going to direct the packets in this way. But let's say that uh, the destination is in Site 4 or Site 3. Data center is going to be the hub for me. So what I'm going to do is to receive these packets and then I'm going to forward them to Site 4 or Site 3, in this case through uh, SC1 network, which is going to be super easy, of course. And uh, so these are the connections that we have uh, for different sites and, um, you know, uh, the network that we have for SC1. Let's say that we have this data center. Data center is going to be the hub of everything. So what happens if data center connection fails? So we can have another data center in this scenario. Let's say that I'm going to create another data center, which is going to be, let's say, uh, another hub. And I'm going to have something like vManages here, vBonds, and vSmart. And these are going to be uh, clustered by uh, other vManages in other sites, of course. Then I'm going to have connections uh, to SC1 network. Also, I'm going to have connection to MPLS network. Now, I can just uh, send all the routes with low preference here. Let's say, for example, if this is connected through BGP, I can just add an extra uh, AS path and this is going to be uh, less preferable to the major data center that I have here. Let's say data center 1 in this case. And when I have this kind of a connection, then uh, my network is going to work just fine without any problems. So that is going to be uh, a simple migration. So later we are going to have a connection from site 1 to MPLS network, and that's going to be migrated to um, to the SC1 as well and we can add as many sites as we wish 
uh, to this scenario and uh, that's not going to have any any issue at all so that's almost everything about this like I said this is not going to have any configuration but you can easily understand uh, the overall design and how we can migrate from one type of network to another type of network so like I said uh, we are going to have something like OSPF in our network and uh, the type of route that we are going to use E1, E2 and that's it